Hi, now we're going to look at how we use the inverse normal distribution function on your calculator. Um, and what this is for is if you actually had the probability of something happening, uh, the area under the curve, um, you can find the value along the x or the horizontal axis um, that gives you that probability or area. Now, specifically, we're talking about the area less than a value. So imagine there's your normal distribution curve and imagine you know this area here for instance your inverse probability uh, inverse normal distribution uh, function on the calculator will find that value for you there given that you know the area already so let's jump straight into it and we're told in example four that um, the continuous random variable x fits a normal distribution where the mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 3, the variance is 3 squared or 9. We've got to find some particular values of A given that we know some probabilities associated with these values. So just like I said on the previous video, you're, you're, going, to, you're going to draw it every time because I want you to get a really good feel for where these values fit on the curve. Now remember that the area less than the mean is 50% or 0.5, the area bigger than the mean is 0.5 as well, which means that, let's put our mean there of 20, if we know that the probability of being less than a number A is 3 quarters, 0.75, then that must be somewhere up here. So that must be A, somewhere like that. And we know that this area here is... 0.75. So how do we find this value A then? Well, first of all, we go to the distribution um, setting on the calculator again, number seven, and we choose number three, inverse normal. So we type in the area that's less than this value, only works for an area to the left of the value. Um, we type in our value of the standard deviation, which in this case is three, mean in this case is 20 and it tells me that my number a in this case is 22.0 to three significant figures now always stop and think does that make sense um if the mean 20 is here then anything to this side of it which would give us an area of more than 0.5 must be more than 20 so 22.0 makes perfect sense with the diagram as well and we've got a good feel for what's happening now let's try the next one this time we're told that the probability that we're bigger than a particular value a is 0.4 so let's sketch it again 20 is the mean in the middle there now if we're bigger than it but we have an area of 0.4, what you need to stop and ask yourself is, where is A along here? Now, if A was uh, this side, let's say somewhere like that, for instance, then the area above that is more than 0.5. So it can't be that side. It must be over here, somewhere like this, A. And the area here is probably slightly close to 20, but it doesn't have to be a work of art or a specific. It doesn't have to be particularly accurate. It's only a sketch. Um, we're told that that area there is 0.4. It's less than half, you see. So, of course, if we drew the line at 20, that area to the right would be half. The area to the left would be half. So knowing that and knowing that the calculator only works out um, an area less than a particular value on this inverse function, we know that this area here must be 0.6 because it's 1 minus 0.4. So on our calculator, we want to find the value of A that produces an area less than it of 0.6. We've got the same values of um, mu and sigma. And that gives me this value A as 20.76. So we have got, let's try and squish this in here. In fact, I'll write it down here. So this implies that A is 20.76. And that's to four significant figures or two decimal places. I could have done it to three significant figures, 20.8, but it's only because it's got those zeros after it that I chose to give it a little more accurately. Now for the third one, we have got to um, find, well, we're told, sorry, let's read it again. I think I've missed something off here. Yeah, we're told that the area between 16 and A is 0.3. So 
let's do our sketch of the curve and put 20 in the middle now off the top of my head do I, I know 16 is obviously less than 20 do I know whether or not a is less than 20 let's think about this out loud for a second um, we know that the point of inflection there is 17 um, because it's one standard deviation to the left of the mean so the point of inflection roughly there is at 17 so 16 is about here um, I know that between um, 17 and 23 one standard deviation either side of 20 we've got an area of about um, 60 0.68 half of that is 0.34 ah so um, from 17 up to 20 we're dealing with an area of 0.34 so an area of 0.3 I'm, I'm banking on this value a being less than 20. Now what I've done there doesn't really matter whether or not you draw a to the right of 20 all you'll find is that when you work it out on the calculator you'll you'll get the correct answer and you can amend your diagram so don't worry too much about um, having to guess that one and where a is located in this case but what do we know? We know that um, this area here between the two is 0.3 now, what could we get from our calculator? Let's have a think about this. So, um, hmm, on my calculator, I can work out areas less than a particular value. So I could work out, for instance, the probability that X is less than 16. Um, once I've worked out this probability here, if I add 0.3 to it, I can use that answer with my inverse um, function on the calculator to work out the value of A, because the probability less than A would be this green area plus 0.3. So that's going to be my approach. So first of all, I'm going to go, the probability that X is less than 16 is, and I need to go on here back to the distribution function, but this time onto normal cumulative. Remember, pick a really low um, low value, so I'll go minus 100 up to 16. We have, just double check our values of mu and sigma, 20 and 3, that's fine. So that green area is 0 0.09121. So the green plus the blue here is going to be 0.3. 9121. So what I know, let's do it in a different colour, that's all of this area here. The probability that x is less than a is 0 0.09121 plus 0.3, so 0.39121. Now I'm going to find out what the value of a is from that. So we want our inverse normal our area is 0.39121. We've got our mu and our sigma in there. So A is coming out as 19.17 to two decimal places. So I, I, what I did in there to, to attack this was to recognise that we need to, um, in order to use this function here, we need to know the entire area to the left of A. So I knew part of it was 0.3, I just had to work out the rest of that part using my calculator first. Now let's look at this in context. So example five tells us that we have a continuous random variable called D, and D is the diameter of a plate um, in centimetres, and these are plates that are made during a manufacturing process, the question says. Um, and we know that these plates have an average diameter of 20 centimetres, and their um, standard deviation is 1.5, which means they're kind of averaged, the average um, deviation away from that mean of 20 is 1.5. But don't forget, we write the variance here, so we can either write what 1.5 squared is, or we can just write 1.5 squared. Now, we're told that 60% of plates have a diameter less than some unknown value x, and we've got to find that x. The first thing you're always going to do here is write this in um, a, a proper probability statement. So that we want the probability that d is less than some unknown value x is 0.6. Once you've written your probability statement, you then sketch what's going on. 
and you highlight the area you're looking you're told or that you're looking for so we know that d uh, the uh, mean mu is 20 then probability that we're less than some value x is 0.6 um, less than 20 would be 0.5 so 0.6 an area of 0.6 is something like that and this gives us here our value x that we're trying to find so we can go straight to our um, inverse normal the area is 0.6 uh, sigma is 1.5 and mu is 20 so that gives me a value of x of 20.38 centimetres and let's keep the units on there if we're given something in context let's give our answer in the right context as well and now in part b we're asked to find the interquartile range of um, this distribution so here's the thing when you're dealing with interquartile range you need to remember that the lower quartile um, let's call the lower quartile l we know that let's let's call it l so we know that the probability that um, d is less than the lower quartile l is 0.25 because that's literally the definition of the lower quartile isn't it um, for the upper quartile we know that the probability that the diameter is less than that upper quartile is 0.75 because again that's just the definition of the upper quartile so we can find the lower and the upper quartiles using our inverse normal distribution function on the calculator let's do that before I actually do find them I'm going to go for my sketch first just so that I can kind of start to conceptualize what's going on here we have got 20 in the middle we've got U, uh, L down here we've got U up here um, and we know that let's use some different colors for each that's 0.25 but all of this including that 0.25 there is 0.75 so I'll stick with the same colors for writing the answers just to keep it consistent um, we are finding the lower quartile first so on my inverse normal my area is 0.25 my sigma was 1.5 my mu is 20 and that gives me the lower quartile is 18 point nine nine centimeters but then for the upper quartile we want an area of 0 0.75 and that gives me the upper quartile as 21.01 centimeters so combining them both together I can say that the interquartile range is 21.01 minus 18.99 Let's go back into normal mode and that gives me 2.02 .02 centimetres for my interquartile range. And now you can have a go at exercise 3C please.